just because somebody trims their hair every other week doesn't mean you need to trim your hair every other week. Maybe the other person's hair grows faster and your hair doesn't and you're out here following this chick who's trimming her hair every two weeks and you're balding and the chick is not because she knows her hair enough to know when she needs to trim. Hey guys, welcome to my natural academia and today I'll be discussing a couple of reasons as to why your hair may not be growing. The first reason I have is age and stress level. It has been scientifically proven that the older you get, the thinner your hair gets. That correlates with um, stress level because the more stress you have, the more likely you are to age faster. When the hair strands of a person becomes weak, it becomes more vulnerable to shedding and breakage and you know all that good stuff. Our scalp produces an oil called sebum. The sebum oil in our scalp helps our hair to appear hydrated and moisturized. Production of that oil can start to slow down at around the age of 45. But depending on your stress level, it might start to slow down faster. So basically that means your age and stress level can directly impact the oil production on your scalp. That doesn't mean that after the age of 45, your hair stops growing. It just basically means that the older you get, the less sebum your scalp produces. The next reason I have down is a person's diet. So your diet and vitamin deficiencies can directly impact and affect the rate at which your hair grows very important that if you're trying to grow your hair you do watch what you eat and not like consume a lot of junk food and stuff that don't have a lot of vitamins inside of it if you are somebody that is just naturally de deficient to certain vitamins you can um take them in capsules or whatever but i don't personally take any vitamins just because you know my diet is pretty healthy and i don't think i lack any vitamins actually i don't know but i don't think i do you want to make sure that you're consuming foods that can strengthen your hair i usually just cook for myself I don't find it hard to cook. The next factor I wanted to talk about is your genetics. Each person has an individual hair growth cycle in which their hair has the potential to grow the longest or reach its longest length. Now this doesn't mean that your hair is gonna stop growing at a certain length. It basically just means that there's a certain amount of time that you have where your hair grows like the longest or the fastest, if that makes any sense. Now, depending on your genetics, this growth phase can last between two to six years. Most hair grows at a rate of half an inch a month, and that's only on average, so your hair can go faster than that or lower than that. Now, each individual hair strand on your head goes through this growth cycle individually. Each strand completes the cycle at a different rate. That's why, I mean, if you don't cut your hair into a specific shape, that's why some parts of your hair grows faster and other parts grow slower. So this basically just means that depending on your genetics, your hair can grow more or less than half an inch a month, but your hair will still grow every month the next reason i have is um excess shedding so um everybody sheds hair this is just the natural part of the hair growth process so a person's hair sheds about 100 strands per day and that could be more or less it's, the average is just 100. um losing 100 strands per day doesn't necessarily mean that your hair is going to shed to, to the point where you just have no more hair left on your head shedding basically occurs so that so that old and weak hair can fall out your head and then new hair can just grow and replace it and this typically happens um rather quickly which is why you can't really see or feel like a visible difference because your hair is just it, it's just growing and replacing itself however there can be some instances where the regrowth of your um new hair grows slower than the amount of hair that you're losing when this starts to happen your hair will visibly look like thinner and this can be due to stress levels or diet or genetics or anything like that the next reason i have is excess breakage when a person over manipulates their hair with either brushing styling or even processing their hair it can lead to major um split ends and a single strand knot which then leads to breakage some other instances that might cause excess breakage are handling your hair too roughly using uncovered hair elastics like rubber bands a cheap type of hair elastics that just cause your hair strands to wrap around the elastics and then when you're taking it out you know your hair just pops if your hair grows at a rate of half an inch a month on average and you're breaking about half an inch of your hair a month um it's only obvious that you won't see the hair growth so you might think that your hair is not growing, but really it is growing. You're just not retaining the length because your hair is just breaking. Bleaching and chemical utilization can also cause your hair to, to become overprocessed, which then causes a person to lose elasticity and moisture in their hair at a quicker pace. When a person loses elasticity in their hair, it causes their hair to be like stiff. Basically, when your hair is stiff, it's more likely to break and pop. So you wanna make sure that you're not overprocessing your hair with different chemicals and stuff. I mean, if you wanna bleach your hair, go ahead, but at least take care of it and not overprocess it, I guess. I don't know, I can't stop people from processing their hair. It's just what you wanna do, go ahead, hair will grow back. The best ways to avoid your hair from snapping and breaking are to just be gentle with your hair and treat it like it's something that's fragile, cause it is fragile. If you tug on your hair too much, 
it will break off. Try moisturizing your hair or doing replenishing treatments like aloe vera treatments or protein treatments and stuff like that. Another thing that can um, cause your hair to break and pop off is basically the lack of moisture. So um, when you go out into the sun, the sun is heat. The sun is a big ball of fire. It absorbs like moisture. If you are somebody that's constantly going out in the sun, your hair will visibly look and feel dry. So a way that you can protect your hair from drying out in the sun is by using products with UV protection on them. Um, I don't use stuff like that because I don't feel that I need to. I'm not usually ever in the sun at all. I'm always in my room. So you can use products with UV protection or you can just avoid going in the sun as often or if you do go in, out in the sun, make sure to moisturize your hair before and after you go out in the sun. Which brings me to my next reason, a lack of moisture. The more textured your hair is, the more moisture your hair will need. The need for moisture is commonly associated with people with textured hair, um, so like wavy hair or curly hair or coily hair. But the physical makeup of our hair doesn't really allow the um, sebum that I was talking about earlier to, to easily travel down to the ends of our hair. Whereas somebody with straight hair, the sebum could just travel right down to the end of the hair. But basically, um, someone with straighter hair is more likely to have the sebum travel down to the tip of their hair. Whereas somebody with coily hair, it's harder for the sebum to travel down because there's so many like different traveling directions that the sebum has to take. And yeah, it's just harder to get down to the tip. I don't know if that was a good explanation. I hope it was. But that's why sometimes our scalp might feel more moisturized than our ends. And then we're like, oh my gosh, my ends are so rough. My ends are so hard. But girl, how about you moisturize your hair? Then maybe, oh, just maybe it'll be moisturized. So the lack of moisture can run the risk of breakage, which then causes hair loss because you're losing hair when your hair breaks. Next reason I have is that your hand is always in your hair. Over manipulation is commonly associated with excess shedding and breakage. Now when I say your hand is always in it, I don't mean your hand always being in it, but that is also a cause. It could be combs, it could be brushes, or other styling tools. If you find that you're always touching your hair, try wearing a protective style like, um, what's a good protective style? Oh, twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try wearing a protective style or try just tucking your hair away somewhere. Throw a wig on top of it. Throw a scarf on top of it. I don't know. Just put it up so you're not touching it or you don't feel the need to comb through it all the time. Yeah, just leave it alone. I don't know. Moisturize it and don't touch it. I personally only let my hair out if I'm going out on a special occasion. Not even. If I'm going to school, I don't let my hair out. If I'm going to work, I don't let my hair out. If I'm going to church, I don't let my hair out. If I'm at home, I don't let my hair out. Basically, it has to be like a special occasion. Like my birthday, or like a special event, or a date, you know. Or, actually no, I don't even wear my hair out on dates. No, I wear scarves. Just don't wear your hair out so you're not inclined to touching it. Save yourself the trouble and just keep your hair in a protective style. 24 seven, or at least 26, 20, 24, 27, 24, six. Just stop touching your hair. Um, moisturize it, leave it alone, wrap it up, put it in a protective style and you'll be good. Another reason I have written down is that you don't drink enough water. And a lot of you guys just don't drink water. I don't know why, but some of you guys just don't drink water. And it's sad, it is so sad. It's important to moisturize inside and out. Treat your hair like it's a plant, okay? I have a couple plants and I always spray some water on the leaves of my plants as well as the dirt. Yeah, I just like to moisturize my plants inside and out and I'm gonna treat my hair like it's a plant. So I'm gonna moisturize my hair inside and out. Drinking more water can cause you to have clearer skin, you know, longer nails. It just has so much health benefits and if you just not drink water and all you're drinking is these high fructose syrup drink or these smooth drinks or sodas or you know stuff like that your hair's not going to grow it's going to appear brittle it's going to appear hard and it's going to pop out one by one and if you're somebody that just doesn't like water well i don't know why you wouldn't like water but if you're just somebody that finds yourself not drinking as much water try um taking in foods with a lot of water so like tomatoes and pineapples watermelon try eating foods with a lot of water in it drinking water and eating these healthy fruits will feed your hair follicles which then promotes hair another reason i wrote down is too much heat some of you guys like to blow out your hair every single day of the week like a flat iron your hair every single day of the week you know what that's gonna cause it's gonna cause your hair to break so stop putting heat in your hair just stop it what's the obsession with straight hair i don't understand i really don't i don't know i guess you know natural hair is pretty versatile it's um what's the word exotic in a sense you could do so much with your hair but why not just wear our own natural hair 
types. Like, I don't know. Your hair doesn't have to be straight to be beautiful. But then again, a lot of people use heat because, you know, they have low porosity hair and they have all these other hair conditions, which I can't understand that a lot of people need the heat in their hair to open their hair follicles so that their hair can accept moisture and, um, I personally don't need to do that because my hair is pretty high high in porosity so my hair just absorbs all the moisture that I put on my hair. If I just slap some, what is it? If I just slap some water in my hair, my hair will automatically absorb it. If I don't really struggle with um, low porosity hair, but people that do struggle with low porosity hair tend to have to use a blow dryer or some heat to open up their hair follicles and I completely understand that. But excess heat, sis, excess heat will weaken your strands. Excess heat will weaken your hair. Excess heat will make your hair break. Excess heat is bad for all hair types. It's not heat that's the problem, it's the amount of heat that people are putting on their hair that becomes a problem. Now, to protect your hair from um, heat damage or excess heat, try, people, I don't know, a lot of people use, a lot of people use heat protectants and stuff. Um, on the rare occasions that I do blow out my hair, I do use a heat protectant and I have never in my life had heat damage, but I know a few people that have, my sister, and um, yeah, she flat on her hair one time and now she's suffering the repercussions of um, heat damage and I feel so bad for her. Poor girl. The next reason I have is that you need a trim. Towards the beginning of my natural hair journey, I didn't really understand the importance of trimming, but then again, I've only ever trimmed my hair three times. <laughs> I've only ever trimmed my hair three times my whole entire life and my hair is perfectly fine and healthy. I advise to only trim your hair when you need to and it also comes with knowing your hair enough to know when to trim your hair because a lot of people just don't know their hair. They just, I don't know. They follow the hair tutorials, they slap on some product, they're like, oh my gosh, my hair feels like and really, does it really feel nice? Does it? It probably doesn't. Yeah, trim your hair when it's absolutely necessary. I try to trim my hair at least one time a year and that's usually towards the end of the year, every year. And this year I had a little scissor happy. So I trimmed like over an inch, about an over an inch of my hair, I think. But it's fine, cause um, I'm pretty good at length retention. So it's not, my hair doesn't really break as easily as other people because I know how to retain my length. And if you feel that your ends are brittle and dry and it's honestly not due to your hair being um, not moisturized, try trimming a quarter of an inch of your hair at a time. Or when I say at a time, I don't mean like every week, um, at your desired pace. I would start at a quarter of an inch and if you feel that you need to, you know, go a little higher, go a little higher, just don't be excessive with it. There's no reason why when you're trimming your hair, you're cutting it off. Why are you cutting your hair? It's a trim, okay? It's not a haircut. If you don't need to trim your hair, don't feel pressured by other naturals trimming their hair all the time. Everybody has a different pace. Everybody, I don't know. Most people know their hair enough to know when they need to trim it. Even if it's, you know, every three months, every six months, every two months, every two weeks. I don't know. Everybody has their own different regimen for their hair. Just because somebody trims their hair every other week doesn't mean you need to trim your hair every other week. Maybe the other person's hair grows faster and your hair doesn't and you're out here following this chick who's trimming her hair every two weeks and you're balding and the chick is not because she knows her hair enough to know when she needs to trim. There's no exact rule on when you should trim your hair but it's typically um, suggested that people trim their hair once a season. I don't do it but if that's what you want to follow by, so be it, be my guest but just know your hair enough to know when you need to trim and knowing your hair just comes with um knowing when to moisturize it when to wash it um when to leave it alone you know all that good stuff the more you keep up with your trims the less you'll see damage so the less you'll see split ends some people have split ends all the way up here and it's just like first of all how did you get a split end all the way up here it's because when the split end it was at the tip of their hair when the split end was at the tip of their hair, you know what they did? They looked at it and they was like, oh, a split end. And didn't cut it off. So, um, yeah, then the split end rides up all the way to the tip of your hair and then it just falls off, it breaks, it breaks everything. Honestly, one way I determined that I need a trim is um, when I look at my ends and it doesn't coil like this. Yeah, if my hair doesn't coil like this, I know I need a trim. Or if I'm doing my hair and I see a bunch of like, tiny semi-circles or circles you know a little um 
you know the little hair that falls out of your head when you're doing your hair i don't know how to explain it it's like very tiny pieces of hair you know what that is that's the ends of your hair breaking because it's dry and it's brittle that's how i know that i need trim when i see the little hair follicles on the floor or when my hair doesn't coil at the ends like it's doing now and last time i trimmed i think was in december yeah last time i trimmed i think it was in december but i might be wrong it could have been november or something like that but i trimmed my hair in december and i'm not trimming my hair again till next november or december so that's just me and that's just how i take care of my hair that's just when i know to trim my hair at the end of the year every year i just like to cut off start the year fresh new you know rejuvenated the last reason i have written down is that you might have an underlying health issue if you're doing everything that i just said that you should be doing and you still don't see hair growth you might have some type of health issue so i would advise you speaking with a, a doctor or something like that because i'm not a specialist yet if you're doing everything that i just said and you still don't see any hair growth or i don't know your hair is just thinning out and you don't know why try seeing a doctor because i honestly don't know what else to tell you um it can be anything from a vitamin or a hormone deficiency to to even like a, a major scalp issue that you may have so so to know for sure just try seeking out and seeing a specialist in um the hair field or whatever it's called well, i don't even know is it a dermatologist i don't think it's a dermatologist but try seeking out and speaking to a health specialist so that you can um have a better idea on why your hair isn't growing these are just some of my tips that i've summed up and um that i feel that i have helped me to grow my hair out if you guys found this video helpful please leave a like down below or a comment if you guys didn't understand anything specifically um yeah that's about it i appreciate you guys for watching this video and if you guys like videos like this please let me know down in the comment section and I hope this video was helpful or insightful in any sense and see you guys next time.